British Railways, which from 1965 traded as British Rail, was the state-owned company that operated most of the overground rail transport in Great Britain between 1948 and 1997. It was formed from the nationalization of the big four British railway companies, and was privatized in stages between 1994 and 1997. Originally a trading brand of the Railway Executive of the British Transport Commission, it became an independent statutory corporation in January 1963, when it was formally renamed the British Railways Board. The period of nationalization saw sweeping changes in the railway. A process of dieselization and electrification took place, and by 1968 steam locomotives had been entirely replaced by diesel and electric traction, except for the Vale of Riedel Railway. Passengers replaced freight as the main source of business, and one-third of the network was closed by the beaching cuts of the 1960s in an effort to reduce rail subsidies. On privatization, responsibility for track, signaling in stations was transferred to rail track and that for trains to the train operating companies. The British Rail Double Arrow logo was formed of two interlocked arrows showing the direction of travel on a double-track railway and was nicknamed the Arrow of Indecision. It is now employed as a generic symbol on street signs in Great Britain denoting railway stations, and is still printed on railway tickets as part of the Rail Delivery Group's jointly managed National Rail brand. British Rail film strip showing how the railways were unified under BR. BR Steam Locomotive 7013 Oliver Cromwell The rail transport system in Great Britain developed during the 19th century. After the grouping of 1923 under the Railways Act 1921, there were four large railway companies, each dominating its own geographic area, the Great Western Railway. The London, Midland and Scottish Railway, the London and Northeastern Railway and the Southern Railway. During World War I the railways were under state control, which continued until 1921. Complete nationalization had been considered, and the Railways Act 1921 is sometimes considered as a precursor to that, but the concept was rejected. Nationalization was subsequently carried out after World War II, under the Transport Act 1947. This act made provision for the nationalization of the network, as part of a policy of nationalizing public services by Clement Attlee's Labour government. British Railways came into existence as the business name of the Railway Executive of the British Transport Commission on January 1, 1948 when it took over the assets of the Big Four. There were also joint railways between the Big Four and a few light railways to consider. Excluded from nationalisation were industrial lines like the Oxfordshire Ironstone Railway. The London Underground, publicly owned since 1933, was also nationalised, becoming the London Transport Executive of the British Transport Commission. The Bister Military Railway was already run by the government. The Electric Liverpool Overhead Railway was also excluded from nationalisation. The railway executive was conscious that some lines on the network were unprofitable and hard to justify socially, and a programme of closures began almost immediately after nationalisation. However, the general financial position of BR became gradually poorer, until an operating loss was recorded in 1955. The executive itself had been abolished in 1953 by the Conservative government, and control of BR transferred to the Parent Commission. Other changes to the British Transport Commission at the same time included the return of road haulage to the private sector. Regions British Railways was divided into regions which were initially based on the areas the former Big Four operated in, later, several lines were transferred between regions. Notably, these included the former Great Central Lines from the Eastern Region to the London Midland Region, and the West of England Main Line from the Southern Region to Western Region The Northeastern Region was merged with the Eastern Region in 1967. In 1982, the regions were abolished and replaced by business sectors, a process known as sectorization. The Anglia Region was created in late 1987, its first general manager being John Edmonds, who began his appointment on October 19, 1987. Full separation from the Eastern Region, apart from engineering design needs, occurred on April 29, 1988. It handled the services from Fenchurch Street and Liverpool Street, its western boundary being Hartford East, Meldrath, and Whittlesea. Blue Pullman at Bristol Bath Road TMD The report, latterly known as the Modernization Plan, was published in January 1955. It was intended to bring the railway system into the 20th century. A government white paper produced in 1956 stated that modernization would help eliminate BR's financial deficit by 1962, but the figures in both this and the original plan were produced for political reasons and not based on detailed analysis. 
The aim was to increase speed, reliability, safety, and line capacity through a series of measures that would make services more attractive to passengers and freight operators, thus recovering traffic loss to the roads. Important areas included, the government appeared to endorse the 1955 program, but did so largely for political reasons. This included the withdrawal of steam traction and its replacement by diesel locomotives. Not all the modernizations would be effective at reducing costs. The dieselization program gave contracts primarily to British suppliers, who had limited experience of diesel locomotive manufacture. And rushed commissioning based on an expectation of rapid electrification, this resulted in numbers of locomotives with poor designs. And a lack of standardization. At the same time, containerized freight was being developed. The marshalling yard building program was a failure, being based on a belief in the continued viability of wagonload traffic in the face of increasingly effective road competition. And lacking effective forward planning or realistic assessments of future freight. A 2002 documentary broadcast on BBC Radio 4 blamed the 1950s decisions for the beleaguered condition of the railway system at that time. Network for Development proposed in 1965 report the development of the major trunk routes during the late 1950s, railway finances continued to worsen, whilst passenger numbers grew after restoring many services reduced during the war. And in 1959 the government stepped in, limiting the amount the BTC could spend without ministerial authority. A white paper proposing reorganization was published in the following year, and a new structure was brought into effect by the Transport Act 1962. This abolished the commission and replaced it by several separate boards. These included a British Railways Board, which took over on January 1, 1963. A Scammel Scarab Truck in British Railways Livery, London, 1962. British Railways was involved in numerous related businesses including road haulage following semi-secret discussions on railway finances by the government-appointed Stedefford Committee in 1961. One of its members, Dr. Richard Beeching, was offered the post of chairing the BTC while it lasted, and then becoming the first chairman of the British Railways Board. A major traffic census in April 1961, which lasted one week, was used in the compilation of a report on the future of the network. This report, the reshaping of British Railways, was published by the BRB in March 1963. The proposals, which became known as the Beeching Cuts, were dramatic. A third of all passenger services and more than 4,000 of the 7,000 stations would close. Beeching, who is thought to have been the author of most of the report, set out some dire figures. One third of the network was carrying just 1% of the traffic. Of the 18,000 passenger coaches, 6,000 were said to be used only 18 times a year or less. Although maintaining them cost between £3 million and £4 million a year, they earned only about £0. 5 meters. Most of the closures were carried out between 1963 and 1970 while other suggested closures were not carried out. The closures were heavily criticized at the time. A small number of stations and lines closed under the beaching program have been reopened, with further reopenings proposed. A second beaching report, the development of the major trunk routes, followed in 1965. This did not recommend closures as such, but outlined a network for development. The fate of the rest of the network was not discussed in the report. The basis for calculating passenger fares changed in 1964. In future, fares on some routes, such as rural, holiday and commuter services, would be set at a higher level than on other routes. Previously, fares had been calculated using a simple rate for the distance traveled which at the time was 3d per mile second class, and 4 half d per mile first class. In 1966, a whites-only recruitment policy for guards at Euston Station was dropped after the case of Asquith Xavier, a migrant from Dominica, who had been refused promotion on those grounds. Was raised in Parliament and taken up by the then Secretary of State for Transport, Barbara Castle. Passenger levels decreased steadily from 1962 to the late 1970s, and reached the low in 1982. Network improvements included completing electrification of the Great Eastern Main Line from London to Norwich between 1976 and 1986 and the East Coast Main Line from London to Edinburgh between 1985 and 1990. A main line route closure during this period of relative network stability was the 1500 VDC electrified Woodhead Line between Manchester and Sheffield, passenger service ceased in 1970 and goods in 1981. The 1980s and 1990s saw the closure of some railways which had survived the beaching cuts a generation earlier, but which had seen passenger services withdrawn. 
This included the bulk of the Chester and Connors Key Railway in 1992, the Briarly Hill to Walsall section of the South Staffordshire Line in 1993. While the Birmingham to Wolverhampton section of the Great Western Railway was closed in three phases between 1972 and 1992. A further British Rail report, from a committee chaired by Sir David Serple, was published in 1983. The Serple report made no recommendations as such, but did set out various options for the network including, at their most extreme, a skeletal system of less than 2,000 route km. This report was not welcomed, and the government decided to quietly leave it on the shelf. Meanwhile, BR was gradually reorganized, with the regional structure finally being abolished and replaced with business-led sectors. This process, known as sectorization, led to far greater customer focus, but was cut short in 1994 with the splitting up of BR for privatization. Network Southeast Class 465 at Charing Cross upon sectorization in 1982, three passenger sectors were created, Inner City, Operating Principal Express Services, London and Southeast. Operating commuter services in the London area, and provincial responsible for all other passenger services. In the metropolitan counties local services were managed by the passenger transport executives. Provincial was the most subsidized of the three sectors. Upon formation, its costs were four times its revenue. During the 1980s British Rail ran the Rail Riders Membership Club aimed at 5 to 15 year olds. Because British Railways was such a large operation, running not just railways but also ferries, steamships and hotels, it has been considered difficult to analyze the effects of nationalization. Prices rose quickly in this period, rising 108% in real terms from 1979 to 1994, as prices rose by 262% but RPI only increased by 154% in the same time. Following nationalization in 1948, British Railways began to adapt the corporate liveries on the rolling stock it had inherited from its predecessor railway companies. Initially, an express blue was used on passenger locomotives, an LNWR style line black for mixed traffic locomotives, but later green was more widely adopted. Development of a corporate identity for the organization was hampered by the competing ambitions of the British Transport Commission and the railway executive. The executive attempted to introduce a modern Art Deco style curved logo which could also serve as the standard for station signage totems. BR eventually adopted the common branding of the BTC as its first corporate logo. A Lion Astrata spoked wheel, designed for the BTC by Cecil Thomas, on the bar overlaid across the wheel, the BTC's name was replaced with the words British Railways. This logo, nicknamed the Cycling Lion, was applied from 1948 to 1956 to the sides of locomotives, while the oval style was adopted for station signs across Great Britain. Each colored according to the appropriate BR region, using the Gill Sands font first adopted by Lunar in 1923. In 1956, the BTC was granted a heraldic achievement by the College of Arms and the Lord Lyon, and then BTC Chairman Brian Robertson wanted a grander logo for the railways. BR's second corporate logo, designed in consultation with Charles Franklin, adapted the original, depicting a rampant lion emerging from a heraldic crown and holding a spoked wheel. All enclosed in a roundel with the British Railway's name displayed across a bar on either side. This emblem soon acquired the nickname of the ferret and dartboard. A variant of the logo with a name in a circle was also used on locomotives. The British Rail Double Arrow designed by Gerald Barney The zeal for modernization in the Beeching era drove the next rebranding exercise, and BR management wished to divest the organization of anachronistic heraldic motifs and develop a corporate identity to rival that of London Transport. BR's design panel set up a working party led by Milner Gray of the Design Research Unit. They drew up a corporate identity manual which established a coherent brand and design standard for the whole organization, specifying Rail blue and pearl gray as the standard color scheme for all rolling stock, rail alphabet as the standard corporate typeface. Designed by Jock Kinnair and Margaret Calvert, and introducing the now iconic corporate identity symbol of the double arrow logo. Designed by Gerald Barney, this arrow device was formed of two interlocked arrows across two parallel lines, symbolizing a double track railway. It was likened to a bolt of lightning or barbed wire, and also acquired a nickname, the Arrow of Indecision. A mirror image of the double arrow was used on the port side of brown ceiling ferry funnels. The new BR corporate identity and double arrow were rolled out in 1965, and the brand name of the organization was truncated to British Rail. The uniformity of BR branding continued until the process of sectorization was introduced in the 1980s. 
certain VR operations such as inner city, network southeast, regional railways or rail freight began to adopt their own identities, introducing logos and color schemes which were essentially variants of the British rail brand. Eventually, as sectorization developed into a prelude to privatization, the unified British rail brand disappeared, with the notable exception of the double arrow symbol, which has survived to this day and serves as a generic trademark to denote railway services across Great Britain. The BR Corporate Identity Manual is noted as a piece of British design history and there are plans for it to be republished. Despite its nationalization in 1947 as one of the commanding heights of the economy, according to some sources British Rail was not profitable for most of its history. Newspapers reported that as recently as the 1990s, public rail subsidy was counted as profit. As early as 1961, British railways were losing £300,000 a day. Although the company was considered the sole public transport option in many rural areas, the beaching cuts made buses the only public transport available in some rural areas. Despite increases in traffic congestion and road fuel prices beginning to rise in the 1990s, British rail remained unprofitable. Following sectorization, inner city became profitable. Inner city became one of Britain's top 150 companies, providing city centre to city centre travel across the nation from Aberdeen and Inverness in the north, to Poole and Penzance in the south. In 1979 the incoming Conservative government led by Margaret Thatcher was viewed as anti-railway, and did not want to commit public money to the railways. However, British Rail was allowed to spend its own money with government approval. This led to a number of electrification projects being given the go-ahead, including the East Coast Main Line, the spur from Doncaster to Leeds, and the lines in East Anglia out of London Liverpool Street to Norwich and King's Lynn. The list with approximate completion dates includes, in the southwest, the South West Main Line from Bournemouth to Weymouth was electrified along with other infill 750 V DC third rail electrification in the south. In 1988, the line to Aberdare was reopened. A British rail advertisement featured some of the best-known railway structures in Britain, including the Fourth Rail Bridge, Royal Albert Bridge, Glenfinnan Viaduct and London Paddington Station. London Liverpool Street Station was rebuilt, opened by Queen Elizabeth II, and a new station was constructed at Stansted Airport in 1991. The following year, the Mystag Line was reopened. In 1988, the Windsor Link Line, Manchester was constructed and has proven to be an important piece of infrastructure. Passenger rail usage in Great Britain, 1830 to 2021 UK rail subsidy 1985 to 2015, showing the huge increase after the Hatfield crash in 1989. The narrow gauge Vale of Riedel Railway was preserved, becoming the first part of British Rail to be privatised. Between 1994 and 1997, British Rail was privatised. Ownership of the track and infrastructure passed to Railtrack on April 1, 1994. Passenger operations were later franchised to 25 private sector operators. Of the six freight companies, five were sold to Wisconsin Central to form EWS while Freightliner was sold in a management buyout. The Waterloo and City Line was part of Network Southeast. The Waterloo and City Line, part of Network Southeast, was not included in the privatization and was transferred to London Underground in April 1994. The remaining obligations of British Rail were transferred to BRB Limited. The privatization, proposed by the Conservative government in 1992, was opposed by the Labour Party and the rail unions. Although Labour initially proposed to reverse privatisation, the new Labour Manifesto of 1997 instead opposed Conservative plans to privatise the London Underground. Rail unions have historically opposed privatisation, but former Associated Society of Locomotive Engineers and Fireman General Secretary Lou Adams moved to work for Virgin Rail Group, and said on a 2004 radio phone-in. Program, all the time it was in the public sector, all we got were cuts, cuts, cuts. And today there are more members in the trade union, more train drivers, and more trains running. The reality is that it worked. We've protected jobs, and we got more jobs. Crowds on a rail tour at Mystag Castle Street Station since reopened by BR is the Mystag Line the former BR network. With the trunk routes of the West Coast Main Line, East Coast Main Line, Great Western Main Line, Great Eastern Main Line, and Midland Main Line, and other lines. The narrow gauge Vale of Riedel Railway in Ceredigion, Wales became part of British Railways at nationalisation. Although built as a working railway, in 1948 the line was principally a tourist attraction. British Rail operated the line using steam locomotives, long after the withdrawal of standard gauge steam. 
The Line's three steam locomotives were the only ones to receive top serial numbers and be painted in BR Rail Blue livery with the double arrow logo. The Vale of Riedel Railway was privatized in 1989 and continues to operate as a private heritage railway. Other preserved lines, or heritage railways, have reopened lines previously closed by British Rail. These range from picturesque rural branch lines like the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway to sections of main lines such as the Great Central Railway. Many have links to the National Rail Network, both at station interchanges, for example the Severn Valley Railway between Kidderminster and Kidderminster Town, and physical rail connections like the Watercrest Line at Alton. Although most are operated solely as leisure amenities some also provide educational resources, and a few have ambitions to restore commercial services over routes abandoned by the nationalized industry. Sealing House Flag British Railways operated ships from its formation in 1948 on several routes. Many ships were acquired on nationalization, and others were built for operation by British Railways or its later subsidiary, Sealink. Those ships capable of carrying rail vehicles were classed under TOPS as Class 99. Sealink MV St. David birthed in Larne, Northern Ireland Sealink was originally the brand name for the ferry services of British Rail in the United Kingdom and Ireland. Services to France, Belgium, and the Netherlands were run by Sealink UK as part of the Sealink Consortium which also used ferries owned by French National Railways, the Belgian. Maritime Transport Authority Regie voor Maritime Transport slash Regie des Transports Maritimes and the Dutch Stumbart Maatschappij Zeeland. Historically, the shipping services were exclusively an extension of the railways across the English Channel and the Irish Sea in order to provide through, integrated services to mainland Europe and Ireland. As international travel became more popular in the late 1960s and before air travel became generally affordable, the responsibility for shipping services was taken away from the British Rail regions and in 1969 centralised in a new division, British Rail Shipping and International Services Division. With the advent of car ferry services, the old passenger-only ferries were gradually replaced by roll-on-slash-roll-off ships, catering for motorists and rail passengers as well as road freight. However, given that there was now competition in the form of other ferry companies offering crossings to motorists, it became necessary to market the services in a normal business fashion. Thus, with the other partners mentioned above, the brand name Sealink was introduced for the consortium. In the late 1960s, as demand for international rail travel declined and the shipping business became almost exclusively dependent on passenger and freight vehicle traffic, the ferry business was incorporated as Sealink UK Limited on January 1, 1979. A wholly owned subsidiary of the British Railways Board, but still part of the Sealink Consortium. In 1979, Sealink acquired Manx Line which offered services to the Isle of Man from Haitian. On July 27, 1984 the UK government sold Sealink UK Limited to sea containers for £66 million and the company was renamed Sealink British Ferries. The sale excluded the operations of Hoverspeed, the Isle of Wight services and then a share in the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company, as well as the Port of Haitian. In 1996, the Sealink name disappeared when the UK services, by then owned by Stina, were rebranded as Stina Line. The agreement with the SNCF on the Dover to Calais route also ended at this time and the French-run Sealink services were rebranded as Sea France. The joint hovercraft services of British Rail in association with the French SNCF. British Rail Hovercraft Limited was established in 1965, under authority given to it by the British Railways Act 1967 and started its first service in 1966. Sea Speed started cross-channel services from Dover to Calais and Boulogne-sur-Mer, France using SRN4 hovercraft in August 1968. Brel's first logo, C. 1969 incorporated on October 31, 1969, British Rail Engineering Limited was a wholly owned railway systems engineering subsidiary of the British Railways Board. Created through the Transport Act 1968, to manage BR's 13 workshops, it replaced the British Rail Workshops Division which had existed since 1948. The works managed by Brel were Ashford, Crew, Derby Locomotive Works, Derby Litchurch Lane, Doncaster, Eastleigh, Glasgow, Horwick Foundry, Shildon, Swindon, Temple Mills, Wolverton, and York. Brel began trading in January 1970. In 1989 Brel was sold to a consortium of Azia Brown Bavarian Trafalgar House. A family of railway carriages, designed and built by British Rail Workshops between 1964 and 1975. They were of steel construction. 
An advanced passenger train departs Houston for Glasgow in the 1970s, British Rail developed tilting train technology in the advanced passenger train. There had been earlier experiments and prototypes in other countries, notably Italy. The objective of the tilt was to minimize the discomfort to passengers caused by taking the curves of the West Coast Main Line at high speed. The APT also had hydrokinetic brakes, which enabled the train to stop from 150 miles per hour within existing signal spacings. The introduction into service of the advanced passenger train was to be a three-stage project. Phase 1, the development of an experimental APT, was completed. This used a gas turbine electric locomotive, the only multiple unit so powered that was used by British Rail. It was formed of two power cars, initially with nothing between them and later, two trailer cars. The cars were made of aluminium to reduce the weight of the unit and were articulated. The gas turbine was dropped from development, due to excessive noise and the high fuel costs of the late 1970s. The APTE first ran on July 25, 1971. The Train Drivers Union, a SLEF, blacklisted the train due to its use of a single driver. The train was moved to Derby. This triggered a one-day strike by a SLEF that cost BR more than the research budget for the entire year. Phase 2, the introduction of three prototype trains into revenue service on the Glasgow, london Euston route, did occur. Originally, there were to have been eight APTP sets running, with minimal differences between them and the main fleet. However, financial constraints lead to only three being authorized, after two years of discussion by the British Railways Board. The cost was split equally between the Board and the Ministry of Transport. After these delays, considerable pressure grew to put the APTP into revenue service before they were fully ready. This inevitably lead to high-profile failures as a result of technical problems. These failures led to the trains being withdrawn from service while the problems were ironed out. However, by this time, managerial and political support had evaporated. Consequently, Phase 3, the introduction of the squadron fleet, did not occur, and the project was ended in 1982. Although the APT never properly entered service, the experience gained enabled the construction of other high-speed trains. The APT power car technology was imported without the tilt into the design of the Class 91 locomotives, and the tilting technology was incorporated into Italian State Railway's Pendolino trains, which first entered service in 1987. Intercity logo 1978-1985 and Intercity 125 about to depart Manchester Piccadilly in 1986 The Intercity 125, or high-speed train, was a diesel-powered passenger train built by British Rail Engineering Limited between 1975 and 1982 that was credited with saving British Rail. Each set is made up of two Class 43 power cars, one at each end and four to nine Mark III carriages. The name is derived from its top operational speed of 125 miles per hour. The prototype Intercity 125 set the world speed record for diesel traction at 143. 2 miles per hour on June 12, 1973. This was succeeded by a production set reaching 148. 5 miles per hour in November 1987. Under the process of British Rail's privatization, Operations were split into 125 companies between 1994 and 1997. The ownership and operation of the infrastructure of the railway system was taken over by Railtrack. The telecoms infrastructure and British Rail Telecommunications was sold to Rackle, which in turn was sold to Global Crossing and merged with Thales Group. The rolling stock was transferred to three private rolling stock companies, Angel Trains, Eversholt Rail Group, and Porterbrook. Passenger services were divided into 25 operating companies, which were led on a franchise basis for a set period, whilst freight services were sold off completely. Dozens of smaller engineering and maintenance companies were also created and sold off. British Rail's passenger services came to an end upon the franchising of Scottrail, with the last service being a Caledonian sleeper service from Glasgow and Edinburgh to London on March 31, 1997. The final service it operated was a rail freight distribution freight train from Ballins Moor to Wembley on November 20, 1997. The British Railways Board continued in existence as a corporation until early 2001, when it was replaced by the Strategic Rail Authority as part of the implementation of the Transport Act 2000. The original passenger franchisees were, since privatization, many groups have campaigned for the renationalization of British Rail, most notably Bring Back British Rail. Various interested parties also have views on the privatization of British Rail. Bring Back British Rail logo The renationalization of the railways of Britain continues to have popular support. 
Polls in 2012 and 2013 showed 70% and 66% support for renationalization, respectively. Due to rail franchises lasting sometimes over a decade, full renationalization would take years unless compensation was paid to terminate contracts early. When the infrastructure owning company Railtrack ceased trading in 2002, the Labour government set up the Not for Dividend Company Network Rail to take over the duties rather than renationalize this part of the network. However, in September 2014, Network Rail was reclassified as a central government body, adding around £34 billion to public sector net debt. This reclassification had been requested by the Office for Budget Responsibility to comply with Pan European Accounting Standard ASA 10. The Green Party has committed to bringing the railways back into public ownership and has maintained this impetus when other parties argued to maintain the status quo. In 2016, Green MP, Caroline Lucas, put forward a bill that would have seen the rail network fall back into public ownership step by step, as franchises come up for expiry. Under Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour Party pledged to gradually renationalize British rail franchises if elected, as in when their private contracts expire, creating a people's railway. In a pledge during his successful leadership campaign to succeed Corbyn, Keir Starmer said that renationalizing rail would remain as Labour Party policy under his leadership. Following the COVID-19 pandemic decimating franchise revenues and making them unviable, in 2021 the government announced it would take back responsibility for the operations of passenger services through Great British Railways with service provision to be contracted to private operators. In 1989, the ITV sketch show spitting image parodied Hugh Hudson's 1988 British Rail, Britain's Railway advert on the plans of the then conservative British government to privatize the railways featuring many of the show's puppets. Numerous BR trains and landmarks and even a cardboard cutout of Thomas the Tank Engine. Media related to British Railways and British Rail at Wikimedia Commons. Thanks for watching.